Hi, Doc South here, and uh, boy, we're in the middle of another heat wave Whoosh, here in uh, New Jersey. And I know I lived in uh, the Carolinas where the heat's absolutely insane, uh, but somehow Jersey heat, I don't think, I think it can be a, a, a real, uh, a, can be a torture too. I think there's more humidity and smog or something in, uh, in New Jersey heat. And so I don't know, I've been sitting here in the heat thinking, well, what could be worse than this? <laughs> and uh, uh, I got to, I, I, well, as, I, and I think I came up with something. Building Horseshoe Curve. Yeah, out there in Pennsylvania. Yeah, have you ever been there? Certainly you've seen it. You can Google Horseshoe Curve. Uh, I think Altoona, Pennsylvania. Yeah, well, it's central Pennsylvania anyway. Uh, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Huge curve that... Uh, Evidently, the railroads built some time ago, and I've been a big fan of it. I, I've seen, in fact, I've done videos of riding through it with my grandma when I was a kid, and uh, Sandy and I going to visit the place. I don't know. To me, it's the epitome of railroad, uh, railroad them. It's just an amazing thing to see, and to think that people built it. Holy moly! In fact, it's even mentioned in my uh, book, Aunt Barb's Magic Oven. Uh, where, well, yeah, in that case, uh, God every now and then felt like, eh, I'd take a break. I'm going to go down and help the boys, uh, build horseshoe curve, you know? <laughs> yeah. You take human form, got there and, uh, pretend he was, uh, you know, some guy named Swede Benson and, uh, you know, get the pick and shovel out and do a little work, you know? Um, but in any case, yeah. So I looked it up a little bit. Now I'm not an expert. I don't want, I, I'm just basically covering the, uh, the concept. I don't have all the facts, I'm sure. But evidently, if you were to ask me, I would have said Horseshoe Curve was built, I don't know, like around 1910, something like that. You know, But no, it was built. Actually, it was the plans were made somewhere around 1840. They did the surveying, uh, trying to find just the right way to get from Altoona to uh, Galitzin and Johnstown without necessarily having your train go all over a cliff. Uh, yeah. Um, and it was around 1850 or so they started doing the work. Right. Evidently, and I, I didn't realize this, so pretty much there were steam engines. Obviously, there was railroad, so there was steam engines, but pretty much that doggone curve, uh, the curve originally was built by hand. Yeah. It was around, uh, the I think, the early 1850s. Uh, I guess they got about 450 guys with lots of muscles. And if they didn't have muscles then, by the end of the chore, yeah, they, uh, they sure as heck did by then. Evidently, it was, it, the, the curve was built not with steam shovels and bulldozers, picks and shovels. Picks, shovels, dynamite, and uh, drags, and I guess uh, horse carts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine? I mean, well, first off, you see, the reason they had to build it was there's, there was just too much of an upgrade or downgrade uh, to get from Altoona uh, up to Galitzin and then from Galitzin to uh, Pittsburgh. You, the, the trains going down the hill, well, they'd be runaway trains. Yeah, you know, the brakes fail and look out mama. And uh, going uphill, pulling a load, you got to be kidding. Uh, see? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just what yeah, just so they got to think of something, and evidently they couldn't find a proper uh, grade, so they decided, well, wait a minute, some guy had the idea. Well, if we build a ridge, there's evidently like two rail uh, two ridges that go. If this was Galitzin and down here was Altoona, evidently there was two ridges, and they decided. Rather than go down into the ridge and up the other side or around, it was evidently you couldn't go around it economically. You'd, you know, you'd go all the way down to North Carolina and then have to come back up. Okay, I, I might be exaggerating, but they decided that, well, if you carved uh, this mountain out a bit and then came around and then filled in the valley between the, uh, the other mountain and then, yeah, and, and then went around the rim of that, uh, of the, uh, of the Eastern mountain. Well, bingo. Yeah. You'd, uh, you, it, it might just work. <laughs> and I guess what they're doing, what there's, I guess if you make a curve like that, a horseshoe type curve, 
evidently you can have a relatively gentle grade. You just got one heck of a curve, but that you can slow down for. So evidently though, yeah, these guys started, whenever they started, you know, they had three years uh, and just picks and shovels, I imagine copious amounts of dynamite, I would think, you would hope. And uh, there you go. Gosh, in the winter and the summer, you imagine a hot day like this. Oh my God, out there with, <laughs> you come home from uh, work, you say, oh my God, what a day. <laughs> It, it, yeah, that song 16 Tons comes to mind. Yeah, Tennessee Ernie Ford. Oh, my heavens. And they evidently built, you know, an eastbound line and a westbound line, you know. Prior to that, evidently they had an inclined plane. I guess you'd take the, uh, the, your, your train to the inclined plane and then they'd pull everything up, uh, I guess, with cables. And then there'd be another train up there waiting. Well, you can imagine how long that took. So uh, evidently, once the curve was in place, it cut something like uh, a day or so out of the journey from Harrisburg to Pittsburgh, from what I understand, from what I understand. I mean, oh my heavens. But yeah, all pick and shovel. Oh my, I, I just can't imagine. Let me see if I got anything else here. Uh, oh gosh, what else I know about it? Yeah, 450 guys, picks and shovels. Oh my God. And, uh, yeah, pretty much, yeah, they, uh, uh, oh, and the cost, yeah. Nowadays, that would be, oh, about half a trillion, right? Uh, three, I think it was three million or so was about it. Of course, that was good money back then. Big money. Well, it's big money now, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> That'd be an awful lot of money. Holy moly. But can you imagine? Anyway, my hat's off to those guys. I'm telling you, that was, uh, that was really, uh, really an effort. And, uh, you know, it's kind of, if you're uh, riding on Amtrak or something through, uh, through that section, it is, I don't know, it's somehow, I guess the work involved just gives me chills to think about it. Yeah, it's sitting there having a coffee and uh, staring out at the, uh, at the distant horizon to the south there. Yeah, it's a pretty cool place. And like I said, you can go there. Uh, you go to Altoona and there's uh, directions to get to the uh, spot. They got like a little park there. You can watch the trains go by. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I thought I'd say, so if you got a bad day at work, just, yeah, just think, <laughs> just think uh, what it must have been. And you know, it'd probably take three years nowadays. Yeah. With all that equipment, I'll bet it would by the time, uh, probably with, by the time all the legal and environmental stuff got done, yeah, they'd probably, I wonder what the, I wonder if they would have been upset with how they built it, if the environmentalists would have said, oh, no, you don't. I wonder. And I'm not saying anything, you know, environmentalists got their place. I mean, they, you know, you can make some awful mistakes uh, to the environment. I wonder what they'd say. Hmm. Have to think on that. Okay. I'll see you later. Thank you. And, uh, uh, well, have fun at work. <laughs> I'll see you later. Although, you know, guys, wait, real quick. Can you imagine once that was built and you're, you know, you were one of the guys, can you imagine taking your kids up there and say, see, kids, dad built that. Boy, I, I don't know. I think the kids would look at you and say, dad, you were nuts. <laughs> but thank you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'll see you later. Bye now.